Hey guys, Scott True here. I'm at my house under construction here on a Sunday and I am fulfilling my promise of posting at least one thing per day. So today I'm gonna to talk about HVAC. This is gonna be part one. There'll be uh, several parts to that because we're not, we're not actually done installing, but I am gonna to start today, so. Give me a moment, I'll go inside and we'll talk about it. Here we are inside the house. This house is 2348 square feet and the manual J came in at 1.8 tons. Uh, needed in, a, in heating and cooling equipment. And so we have uh, done the manual S and matched that up with, uh, we, here we're gonna be using a Bosch fully variable two ton. So that's variable indoor unit and outdoor unit. And here are the central returns. And of course, we've done a manual D to calculate, you know, which, what each room needs in terms of supply, duct size, register size, all that. The ventilation in this home will be done through a Brone AI series ERV. I'm getting the new uh, 210 version, which is goes up to 210 CFM, which is more than what's needed for this house. I'm choosing to go above what's needed because I want that extra ventilation sometimes uh, when there's a lot going on in the house. And so the way that works is we have these exhaust ports and what you'll notice if I show you every single exhaust port, they're always the opposite end of the door. And that's because this system, we put the exhaust ports in the bathrooms and laundry, but this system is designed to ventilate the whole house. It's So it's sucking the exhaust from like, for example, this bathroom, and that the fresh air gets dumped into the existing ductwork. So the fresh air comes in and it is spread out, spread throughout the house evenly. So that kind of airflow is dumped through the house. The air will flow under the door if it's closed and then diagonally through this space, which is why we put it at the corner to promote that airflow through the whole room. And then of course, you've got to have it above the shower or the bathtub because removing that humidity is really important. So there's another one in that corner. If you don't already know what an ERV does, it's, we'll talk more about it, um, but I will say, for now that it is a balanced way to ventilate a home so you're not pressurizing or depressurizing it. So we've got one exhaust port in the guest bath, one in the laundry room. Again, opposite corner as the door. And then above the shower in the master and in that toilet closet there. So this kind of a simple install is a way to keep the cost down. If you're building tight, you pretty much need an ERV. Otherwise that depressurization cost from traditional fart fans 
is going to cause problems for the home. Um, you, you may have seen some big numbers thrown around on YouTube, but I'm telling you that you can get decent uh, ERVs for a good price and you keep the install at a lower price by keeping the install simple. Now, in addition to the ERV, we also have a dehumidifier. I'm not going up into the attic because it's a mess. Um, that's why I'm doing this in parts. When they finish the install up there, we'll go up there and take a look. But the dehumidifier is pretty close to this attic access. Uh, the return for the dehumidifier is right there. It's one of those. And then it will use the existing ductwork to supply into the house. Um, you do not always need a dehumidifier. That's something we'll talk more about as well as we get further into this. Um, you probably will hear people say that you need one in the South. I don't believe you do. Um, as long as you have a system that is designed well, sized properly, and can handle the, the latent capability. Um, I am choosing here to have one because I'm going a little bit above and beyond on some things. And that is, in my opinion, and something that I'm going above and beyond with. This other grill right next to the return is actually make up air for the dryer. I've got two dampers that I can switch right here on and off. One damper is 10 inch and will passively bring outside air in through one of these grills. It's next to the dehumidifier so that it can be dehumidified right away. The other damper is connected to the dehumidifier. It's a six inch. And my preference would have been for that to be the only makeup air system for the dryer. Uh, but um, we are thinking that it's not going to be enough air, which is why we have option two here. I will experiment and let you guys know how that goes. The reason you see so many grills here is because one of these grills is the return for the attic. The attic in all of my homes is considered a room in the manual J. It is not conditioned by accident. It is something that we calculate. We 3D model it, calculate the volume, put it in the manual J. And in this case, we calculated that we needed two six inch ducts to cool and heat this attic. So this attic, because of my vaulted ceilings, um, the attic runs in a diagonal way through the house. So I have one six inch duct on this corner blowing, blowing towards the corner and then I have another six inch duct on the opposite corner. And then the return for the attic is in the middle. Again, I'm always thinking about which way I'm promoting the airflow, airflow to go. I want to usually promote the airflow to go through an entire space versus only part of it. Uh, I could have connected the return uh, right on the return plenum, but we calculated that that would have sucked too much. So this return is just, that's a transfer grill. You can actually see the other side of it. But doing it this way, it's passively being returned through that grill and then it can immediately be sucked up into the main returns for that are right next to it. This other grill is the makeup air for the range hood. 
The range hood is going to be a remote blower, uh, which is something that I always recommend in a, in a home where you can afford that. The remote blower makes the range hood very quiet, which is nice. It's much easier to leave that um, range hood on longer if it's quiet. So ours will be one that goes up to 750 CFM and we're going to be using the Fantech Makeup Air Kit, which is a, it's a fan forest system, pulls the air from the outside, sends it through a filter and a silencer, and there is a electrical current sensor wired to the range hood so that it can sense the current, learn the system, and then match the CFM. So if the range hood is on low, Fantech, the Fantech Makeup Air fan will be on low and match the CFM. And if the range hood is on high, the Makeup Air will go into high. So we have that balance completely maintained. So in review, I've got the Bosch two-ton fully variable heat pump. I have the Brone AI Series 210 ERV and the Fantech 750 Makeup Air Kit. And attic is fully conditioned, obviously. I think that pretty much summarizes the uh, HVAC system for this house. Uh, this is, like I said at the beginning, it's part one. Uh, of this HVAC talk part. As I uh, do more parts, we'll talk about each piece of equipment specifically. So for example, the next one might be the dehumidifier. Anyways, guys, um, that's what I got going on in my H for my HVAC system. And we'll talk more. We'll see you next time on Scotch Rebuilds.